The views, information, or opinions expressed during the Lex Talk More Action podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and should not be construed as advice, nor do they necessarily reflect the views of Community Action Council's governing bodies, leadership, or staff, or our funding partners. Community Action Council is a private, nonprofit, and nonpartisan organization. We do not support or endorse any political candidates. <laughs> This the city's number one podcast. Love the topics, the guests, and all of the contrast. They ain't focus on the views and the traffic. What's the point of shining if no jewels for the masses? We gotta spread the news of our passion. Service is a verb, now that's community action. Yo, everybody, let's talk. Nothing talking ain't enough, so everybody, let's walk. We all want freedom, the eagle and the stars. But the only way to reach it, meet the people where they are. Unity's the only way to fend these atrocities. You and me together can eliminate poverty. And this is just a vessel of expression to make sure we stay on the message of progression. Yes, everybody, let's talk. Bring your ideas and together we walk. Protect our seeds from the poisonous root, and we gotta reach the source and the soul and the root. Yes, everybody, let's talk. We need community action together. We walk. Together we work in to reduce violence. Speak through the airways. We refuse silence. Let's talk. You are listening to. Let's talk more action. I am Cameron Minter. I am your co-host and the fabulous Woo-hoo. executive director Sharon Price is in the hey, house. Cam, Cam. What's going on, Sharon? Oh, listen, so much stuff to do at Community Action. I'm I excited know. about it's, today. It's, it's August. We're in a new school year. Everything is just new, 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 new. You know, it just flew by. New ideas, new things that we're That's rolling what out. We've been doing. It's a great time. It's a great time to be at the council. Oh, it is. And this is my fifth year. Oh, as wow. executive. Yeah. yeah, imagine that. Look, two years we don't talk about. The two years the, we don't oh, talk about. Oh, my God. <laughs> you want to talk about, congratulations, you have a job. Right, right. COVID. Yay, boom. Yeah, I know. The whole world went kaput, just blew I up. Know. And I was like, oh, my God. This is baptism by fire. I All of the it. things that I had planned to do, Cam. Boop, boop, Out the door. Out the door. Out the door. You know what? Pivot. I just want to say, uh, I saw your daughter post on her social media page about meat pies. And I even made a comment on it like, I know, and after I, our history, that somehow, some way, a meat pie is going to be frozen for camp. So, where's my meat pie? Listen, my husband ate all of that. You <laughs> say that, that, that every time. That's the truth it's of it. It's awful. So this was, you know, she was like, um, you know, my youngest daughter, she wants to know everything. She's a go-getter. <laughs> she wants to know how to do things for herself and all of that. Oh, yeah. And she was like, I need you to show me. Okay, the week before that, she said, I want to learn how to make uh, etouffee. Ooh, oh, look. Yes, I get, I yes. get the proper name. So, etouffee. 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 And so I was like, I'll show you how to do that. So she's uh-huh. trying to get in touch with her Creole roots from Louisiana. Ooh, and so sounds we Sounds like age, good times. Oh, listen, that was so delicious. And I told her, because you look at these things and you think that they're really complicated uh-huh. to make. They're just time consuming. Right. You know, I don't like to cook. That's that's my one thing, Cam. Yeah, I know. You know, yeah. I don't yeah. like, you know, it's just not a choice of yeah, mine. okay. So we did that. And after we got that done, and she was like, yeah, I did that. I'm like, yeah, and it was great. And it was everybody, you know, ate all of that up. My husband, there was no leftovers or anything. No leftovers. And so she was like, the next thing I want to learn how to make is uh, meat pies. You know, because. Oh, so this, oh, etouffee was the first thing. Etouffee was the first thing. We Ooh. made shrimp etouffee. We didn't even see that. So. No, you didn't see that because it was all gone before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> it was gone. We didn't think to take a picture of it. But that was the first thing. Uh-huh. And then, you know, meat meat pies, because we're from Louisiana, yeah. a little town called Cane River there. Mm-hmm. And that is one of the staples yes. of that culture. And so we got together and we made those meat pies. And now they go. And Cam, I'm so sorry. Well, no, no. You know, it's been, what, four years, three years, something like No, been, four years. It's four years. Yeah, four years because we started during the pandemic. And I haven't let your expectations of me down yet. You sure have not. <laughs> <laughs> you sure have not. Well, that's all right. One day I'm going to provide all of the fixing so that I can be invited for meat pie night. Okay. That's how you do it. Oh, it's meat pie day. That, they oh, are, okay. It, 
is time consuming. Oh. But the treat is wonderful. Okay. The well, treat is wonderful. I forgive you again. I know. I forgive you again. But There's no need to forgive when you know I'm doing my best, Cam. I don't know if you're doing your best. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I can't co-sign that. No. That's all right. That's all right. I forgive you. So. What is going on today's show? It, we've Listen, got a fantastic show. We, I am so excited about our guest today. Mm-hmm. We have, you know, actually, this is Community Action's 60th year anniversary. 60 years. Yes, it is. So you don't is. have sound effects and on your shows. I was going to You were going to go some. ding, 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 I ding. I can make my own sound effects. <laughs> Six, 60th year. Ding, right, ding, ding, right, ding. Right. Oof. <laughs> you know, but... It's our 60th year. We do so much good work. Right. And the man that is going to to be on the show today, the man, the myth, the legend that is going to be on the show today is one of the people, and whether he knows it or not, Mm -hmm. he changed my life. Right. Um, I enjoyed the work that we did, the work that we do, but... Going through the CCAP class. Say it. Yeah. You better put yes. some respect uh, on no. that. We're, get me some sound effects. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Drum roll. You know, changed my life right. and gave me a deeper meaning and understanding of what we what we do at Community Action. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I have with me today the Charles McCain. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Charles, thank to the you, show. Thank you, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. And you know what? Uh, I'm glad to hear that I changed your life. You, you did. Actually, I was trying to change your life. Mm. I really was. Uh, uh, during the CCAP class, uh, I, I, you have a class out there, and there are people you haven't met. But what you want to do is begin to move them, move them forward uh, from seeing community action as a job to saying it is the true calling that it is. And I'm glad that... Uh, that's where you ended up. So I'm glad it changed your life. It, it uh, did. It yeah. really did. And it, I tell people, if you go through the CCAP class, that's a Certified Community Action Professional that's Certification right. That's right. through the national office. If you go through that and you're in it, it's going to change yeah. you. And, you know, I hate that you're trying to retire. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Ain't that right? Right. Well, I'm happy, but I'm sad at yeah. the same time. Uh, well, you know, retirement's retirement. Uh, I've done the uh, uh, the CCAP classes starting in Missouri. I did them in the 90s. And uh, when Jonathan, our youngest son, graduated from high school in 2010, I uh, uh, let the word out that I'd like to travel around and do these classes. So I've been doing them since 2010. Last year was the, uh, the 15th year then. And I'm in my 80s. And I actually have people positioned around the country they're they're there and uh they have a particular job and their job is to tell me if they think that i'm going over the hill that i'm that i'm washed up and so oh, far okay. and so far nobody's spoken up mm. therefore now's the time to do it See, yeah, <laughs> you want to do it look. it's sort of like you want the mechanic to fix your car before it breaks right yeah not afterwards oh. you know you're i'm in my early 80s so what's the expectation you go on your 85 89 and 90s uh, uh i would keep you bang bang my bang my cane on the table and <laughs> say class will come to order <laughs> look yeah You'd be taking your bow tie off, throwing it out. Yeah, Stop yeah, it. Yeah. Stop but, it. Listen uh, to me. Okay. I'll listen you, to you. Oh, no. That's what oh, I'm saying. Okay. You would be that's saying, right. listen that's to right. me. I got it. I got with it. That, with that, I got you know. It. I got it. But uh, I'm a member of the uh, National Partnerships uh, Certification Commission, and uh, my term doesn't expire until 2026. So uh, retiring from the classes doesn't necessarily mean I'm going anywhere right away. And I'm always av- I'm always available for counsel. I'm never going to. Uh, well, you know what? Not just no. one of the things that just amazed me is with all of the classes that you do. You're like known as the Mister <laughs> Community Action around the nation. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. That's you know, very that's very nice uh, of you to say that. But I have been very very lucky that uh, I've been able to do this travel, and I've met uh, many 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 you know wonderful people you and Cameron being among them and, uh, you know, hope that, you know, the, uh, uh, Margaret Washington, 
is the name of a person who was at OCS, oh, quite a number of years ago. And she had a saying that I remember uh, well, which is, there is no success without successors. You all are my successors. And uh, when I'm gone, you'll be here. And I hope you'll remember some of the things that we talked about in, in CCAP class and that, uh, and that you will carry the movement, carry the movement on, and even pass it on. We're, we're actually in the third generation now of community action leadership. Uh, and we have many, many, many new executive directors in the last right. several years, a whole lot. And so the hope is that you, know, you try to pass it, that people remember it, and they'll try to pass it down uh, to the next generation of leadership. Because I think it's right. There's no success without successors. A well, absolutely. Yeah. And I know, because you know the work that we do can be tough sometimes. It's and hard work. You, you have no idea how many yeah. times you cross my mind. <laughs> you know, and well, I, I go back that. to that to remember that. what it is that we're here. This, you, we do good work, but that you doesn't do. mean that it's, that it's easy work. It's and, not easy work. And uh, one of the words in the ethics is that you will conduct the work with fortitude. It's fortitude. This is hard work. Yes, it, it is. It's done right. And uh, not everybody supports the work. So uh, you might get some stones thrown at you from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to have that fortitude to, uh, to press on uh, because we're dealing with uh, a constituency that, you know, everybody has their problems. And it seems like that the problems fall most heavily on those with lower incomes. And so they had the problems that all of us have, I suppose, but, but to a greater degree. Absolutely. To a greater degree. Now, Absolutely. Charles keeps yeah. saying a class, and it, it just makes it kind of misunderstood to our audience that CCAP is, is almost like going back to school. It is like going back to school. It, it, is it several, was harder than getting my master's. It's several <laughs> classes, a lot of information. Tell me, what have you noticed has changed since you first started doing these classes until uh, recently? Well, when I first started doing classes, it was only people from Missouri that, were, that was doing it. Mm. And if you look at some of the old uh, records, uh, I think the first year, well, the first year they didn't walk across stage. The first year they tried to have, they had a private, uh, I don't know if it was a celebration or a party, whatever it was, uh, private recognition uh, that was in San Diego in 1993. The next year, they tried to have it in, uh, I can't remember where the meeting was, but they had it like right during the reception. And uh, people were trying to, you know, people were, were mixing like you're supposed to do at a reception, and they're trying to have this recognition. So I thought, man, that's... <laughs> Well, can't they got that. is can't so do different. that. So you do the walk. But the first couple of years, it was Missouri people. It was Missouri people only, and uh, I'm very pleased that we've uh, been able to expand that pocket of support. Uh, as a matter of fact, Kentucky was uh, uh, the first place I came outside of my home state, Missouri. I'm from Missouri. That's right. Yes. 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 And, and, you heard it. And, <laughs> that's right. Uh, well, Kentucky has a. Uh, a big part in our, our history. I Come don't on, know what, you, what is that? What yeah. is that? I don't know. I don't know if you realize it or not, or know or not, uh, but you're familiar that in 1973, when President Nixon was going to shut the whole thing down, uh, well, we pushed back. We sued. Mm -hmm. uh, Charles Braithwaite was the leader. He was the president of the national organization at the time from Missouri. Uh, but there were, there were four named agencies that were part of the suit. Uh, and then at all, everybody else, there was more than a hundred that signed mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And those four agencies were West central where Braithwaite was, uh, uh, Boston where Bob Cord was, uh, Horton, Kansas of all places where Bill Metcalf was, uh, Metcalf was an attorney. He'd worked for legal aid and we had our own attorneys, but he was kind of an in-house attorney that, that could kind of sort of explain more of what was going on and community action council there it is. that's right uh so you were one of the four named uh in the suit that was eventually won uh but on ccap on ccap uh, uh after i uh announced that you know i'd like to go and do you know and do wherever people would want me uh paul dole asked me 
And so we arranged a meeting in Barberville and we had a little office of his on the square. I remember it very clearly. And most of the people there were uh, uh, from his agency. Uh, two that weren't. There was Kerry Blackham from Audubon and Yuri Matowski. Remember Yuri from who was the training director That's here? That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. And he was there. Uh, Jack Birch had sent him down to sort of check it out uh-huh. and see how it was. And Yuri came back and said, you know, this is, we ought to look into this. So we established a class then and here as well. And, and that's how my life that's changed right, that's right, right there. That's right. <laughs> and then several years later, we combined the classes to have one Kentucky class. But, but yeah, you were right there at the, at the beginning at the of it. the very beginning that's of right. it. All right. That's Making right. history and didn't know it. <laughs> hey, that's look, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we're going to talk more with Charles McCann. You're listening to Let's Talk. More action. You almost said This past year has highlighted the strength of Community Action Council. Every day, our staff works together to help families recover from this crisis. We're educating children at home and in person, helping parents who lost their jobs, and helping households avoid eviction. Our work at Community Action Council has never been more important than it is right now. So why don't you join us? We have employment opportunities requiring a range of skills from entry level to advanced. Apply online at commaction.org. That's commaction.org. Community Action Council's Head Start programs are now enrolling for the 24-25 school year in 15 counties, including Lexington. Head Start offers high-quality early childhood education for qualifying families with children between the ages of 6 weeks and 5 years old. Spaces are limited and filling up quickly. So, to help ensure your child receives the Head Start advantage this year, start your application today by calling 859-233-4600 or go online at comaction.org. That's C O. OMM action.org. Cam, I'm still excited. I'm still with Charles. <laughs> we are talking with Charles yes, McCann. Yes. You are listening to Let's Talk More Action. So Charles, I told you before we went to the break that you changed my life. That going through that process with you really changed my life. What has changed your life? Okay, uh, what's changed my life? And uh, uh, sort of a preface it a little bit. Uh, Herman Melville, the writer, was a good friend of Nathaniel Hawthorne. And they exchanged letters, and some of those letters exist. And one of the letters Melville wrote to Hawthorne is something like, uh, I date my life for my 25th year. Uh, scarcely has a day passed that I've not unfolded some way into myself. So in a sense, you're reborn. reborn. Uh, what happened to me, I was a little bit younger than 25. I was actually in high school. I was a senior, a high school senior. And I remember very clearly the morning of Friday, January 20th, 1961, at 11 o'clock in the morning, Central Time. Now, that's pretty precise. That's but, very precise. That's right. Uh, but I do remember it. I was in Mrs. Moore's third period chemistry class. But on that day, at that hour, John Kennedy was being sworn in as 35th president of the United States. And uh, instead of doing chemistry, uh, much to Mrs. Moore's chagrin, we were allowed to listen to the radio. <laughs> we could listen to the speech. It's been said that Kennedy's inaugural address is every paragraph is worthy of a doctoral dissertation. So it's worth a, it's worth a read. It's probably on YouTube. You can probably, everything else is, you can probably, you know, uh, watch it if you'd like. But, uh, <clears throat> The line from the speech I think that is most frequently quoted is, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. But what I remember and what changed my life uh, was his call. He called my generation. It wasn't just, it wasn't just me. I told someone once that I was called to community action by President Kennedy and they sarcastically asked me, well, were you called on the phone? Well, no, I wasn't called on the phone, but uh, I still, 
I still remember the call. And Sharon, this is not something I remember I remember. I remember the words coming out of that radio. And I remember uh, President Kennedy's call to arms to my generation, uh, a new call to arms, not a call to battle, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle year in and year out against the common enemies of mankind, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war. Well, it changed my life. I didn't know what I wanted to do until I heard that speech. And we didn't have community action agencies in 1961. And the term community action hadn't been coined in 1961. But I knew I wanted to do what he just said. I hadn't been to college yet. You, gotta, you need to go to college, I suppose. So my parents were very... Do what your parents tell you. You need to go, tell you to go to college. Go to that college. Well, I'm glad that's one thing they told me that I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mother, my dear mother, who I loved dearly, uh, I, I, I had done something, and, and uh, I was trying to get out of it by saying, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, I won't make the same mistake twice. And she observed, yeah, but you've made all of them <laughs> once. <laughs> you keep making That's right. <laughs> yeah. so you gotta, something you gotta, only a mother you would gotta say. Listen, you got to listen to your mother <laughs> That's and, right. and your dad. Well, anyway, I graduated from college in 67. Uh, that's six years from high school, 61 to 67. Uh, that's longer than. And one year before I was born. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, you kids, all you kids. Kiddos. So, kiddos. So, uh, uh, well, what had happened? I changed schools twice. I changed majors once. One semester, much to my parents' uh, uh, annoyance, I only took three hours. I made an A, but it only took three hours. And so I didn't move very fast. <laughs> you uh, were, you were, you I weren't worried about I went, the on the fa- I went on the fast track. <laughs> but I graduated from college in 1967. And in, 19, in June of 1967, uh, I started to work for a community action agency. I knew what I wanted to do. So, so there it was in 1967. And the community action, uh, you look back on it, uh, uh, I don't know what course my life would have taken or what I would have done or what I might have done worthwhile uh, that I ended up, I hope it was, some of it was worthwhile and things are a little bit better for people. But uh, I owe all that to, to community action and, and answering Kennedy's call. And it wasn't just me that answered the call. Mm-hmm. Lots lot of, of people, people lots call. of people answered the call. That's right. And, and I think people are still answering the call. I think they are. There's, they haven't maybe haven't heard the call in quite that way. Right. But they feel called to serve. That's they right. They feel called to do this work. And I think that's one of the things yeah. the CCAP uh, certification does. It We... I, I can't speak for everybody. I speak for myself. When I came to Community Action Council, it was a job. I liked what I was doing, but I didn't know how deeply rooted we were into history and how big we were and how important we were. So I began to change my view of my job and what I did and what I provided and who were receiving the uh, efforts of my work. And it changed, you know, and and that's something that, you know, I wasn't around for that speech, but that speech was brought to my memory and and, and brought back and and incorporated into who I am now. So after CCAP. Did you have that same feeling of a light bulb? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, because I'm telling you, I'm not trying to blow it, but CCAP was like, oh, my God, how are we going to get this time in the study? Blah, 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 blah. But when we found the connection that meant something to us, it then became, well, let me see what else I, I, I missed about this job, you know? That's right. And so there's not many places you can go and have that type of experience with impacting your community. And speaking of that, Charles, what in your memory, from your experience, what has been the most fascinating thing or something that you've experienced, um, you know, over the course of time that, that you think about, you know? Well, I think one of the things is... Because we've uh, all got stories. That we all have remember. our stories. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this, for me, uh, we're celebrating 60 years this month, August. Uh, 60 years. And we're still here. What, 
what fascinates me is we are still here. We're not supposed to be here. We've had uh, uh, major threats from three presidents, mm -hmm. That's right. and uh, as well as a major threat from uh, a very powerful uh, Speaker of the House. That would be uh, we had President Nixon, uh, we had President Reagan, uh, we had Speaker Gingrich, and we had uh, uh, even President Obama in his State of the Union. I was know. Going when to, I heard him I know. say <laughs> programs near and dear to my heart. You know, especially like yeah. Community yeah. Action. Yeah. We yes. were named. Yes, mm -hmm. we were. We were named. We were. Uh, so I think that, uh, that, and we're still here. And, uh, and but how do we, how are, why are we, how are we still here? And we're always going to, there's always going to be threats. Uh, there's always going to be the threats. But it isn't lost on me that during these threats, and there have been other threats as well, not quite as major as, as those, uh, but nobody has ever come to save us. We saved ourselves. Say that yeah. Uh, yeah. We were uh, strong enough in our convictions. Uh, we were committed to our ethics. We were committed to our vision and values uh, to the degree that we were able to save ourselves. And uh, I hope that, because we'll be threatened again. Uh, uh, always. Always. That, uh, that the threat might seem, oh, just, you know, insurmountable. But... We saved ourselves. We can. We have the capacity to save ourselves. Well, and what do you? You know, I get frustrated when I hear, um, "Well, community action's been around for sixty years. You know, you haven't ended poverty yet." Yeah. What What do you well, say to people that say well, there's that? There's a couple of things to say. Uh, the first is uh, ending poverty is a vision. It's a dream. Uh, it's a dream. It's a noble vision to eradicate uh, the paradox of poverty in the midst of plenty, as the original act said. And you know, and we've been working diligently to that end. Now, there's a couple of things to be said. Uh, the first is just because we haven't gotten there yet doesn't invalidate that dream. We still have that better world. Uh, is the person who is challenging the program, instead of challenging our program, hey, how about joining us and helping? Yes. And helping to yes. do this. Uh, the poverty is, poverty is very complex. And uh, I had a dear friend, uh, in early community action days, Wayne Thomas was his name, uh, who had many pithy sayings. <laughs> and one of his sayings was people often don't get to where they're going because they quit before they arrive. Maybe we haven't arrived yet, uh, but it doesn't mean we're going to throw in the towel. So that's, that's one thing I think of. Another is, I think sometimes that, uh, if you look at people who, uh, have lower incomes, you get a hospital. Uh, if you've ever gone to the hospital, the job of the hospital is to get you out of the hospital fast. Mm -hmm. As soon you know, as possible. In and out, in and out. So the hospital might have, say, 10 beds, and maybe eight of the beds are these rotating beds where people come in and out. You only have maybe two beds for people that are, are so ill that they have to be hospitalized for quite a long time. So I think we have that rotation. Uh, many people who, uh, you know, somebody loses their job, uh, they're out of work for a month, they miss the car payment out for two months, they miss the house payment, and they need a little boost. Mm -hmm. So they get a boost and then they're back running again. But somebody else then fills those beds. So it's not necessarily the same people we're talking about all the time. Another thing, and, my, and the numbers are a little dated, and regardless of what the date is, you could do this now. 
but I retired from my job as Missouri CSBG director in 2000. And before I left, I added up all the money administered by community action agencies. And I divided that by the number of uh, people with low incomes according to the census in Missouri. And what I discovered was community action agencies have about 150, then had about $150 a year, a low income person to work with. Well, you know that Head Start costs more than $150. And you know that weatherization costs more than $150. And many of our other programs cost more than $150. So, you know, we've got very scarce resources and, you know, the big problem. So, you know, let's consider some of these factors before, you know, we're not, we're not the space program that gets right, the very popular, right. has lots of money. Uh, we're, uh, we're a smaller program. We are and, and expected to do the most. And expected the, to do an awful lot, an awful lot of things. So I don't think that uh, detracts from our vision. Now, one of the things that I've often thought about is we have to serve, we say we serve people. And in community action, at least to me, people always means individuals, families, and communities. And communities. Most people know the, uh, the expression, if uh, you give a person a fish, they eat today. Mm -hmm. But if you teach them the fish, they eat for a lifetime. And I never hear that said, but I don't add as quickly as possible, but not if somebody drains the pond or poisons it, or pollutes it, or redlines the dock. That's right. So you can only fish away from the good catches are. So I think that uh, you can't lay the fact of poverty just at the feet of the people that experience it. Mm. Uh, I think the community has an obligation as well. There are community issues. I know in, uh, uh, well, you mentioned covid uh, uh, more recently, uh, in Missouri, uh, oh, a number of years ago, we had flooding, Missouri river flooded and, uh, some factories never reopened. Mm -hmm. Well, they reopened, but not in St. Joseph. They reopened elsewhere. Well, people lost their jobs. Right. Uh, so we're not talking about it necessarily a problem that people lack job skills or even that they're, they're lazy. Um, many cases there aren't any jobs to be had so so what do you do what are you going to do and uh you've got to take into account uh, the things i mentioned and also i think that uh, you know this is not you can't just lay it at the feet of the people that experience the problem you've got to the community's got to be involved in some way charles what is next for you you talking about retiring how, how long have you been doing Community action. I've been doing community action for 57 years now. 57, 57 years. 57 years. And 50, by my math, that's 60. That's 60. 60 years. Before Sharon was born. <laughs> <laughs> so, I feel like I was doing it before everybody was born. What's next for you? <laughs> what's next for me? Well, I don't plan to, I don't plan to be sitting on the sofa watching television. Mm. Uh, don't plan on that. Uh, some people are encouraged me, encourage me to do some writing. I might do that. I'm still on the commission. I'm still interested in CCAP and community action. Might do some of that. Um, if people want me to, you know, assist in some way in community action, I'm always open to that as well. <clears throat> so, you know, gardening and world travel only go so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I feel like you can have bow tie. You can get um, lessons. Some, yes, yeah, have yes. some lessons with tying bow ties. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes, you know, yes. That's, that's, uh, uh, and, and I've done some of that. Uh, people come over to the house. We the meeting was in New York a couple of years ago. This is way off the subject, but, <laughs> but I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, and uh, we had tickets in New York to go see uh, Hamilton which is big on Broadway. Yes, it is. And we had tickets. Well, we thought that, you know, we don't want to go and be 
you know, in line to get merchandise, you know, trinkets and things. We usually get uh, keychains. We use them for Christmas ornaments, all these keychains we buy, different places That's we go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and so we went to the Hamilton store across the street, and they had all the merchandise, and, and they were there. And there was some worker there that I had on a bow tie, and there was a worker there that said, uh, uh, can you teach me how to tie a bow tie? I knew it. <laughs> and I said, sure. So uh, we tied the bow tie a couple of times, and he had one of his assistants, you know, on the phone, film me take a bow tie. He said, you going to the show? And I said, yeah, I'm going to go to the show. We're going to the show tonight. Um, uh, I said, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to have some fun if you're willing to do it. He said, well, what is it? And I said, I said, I'd like to be able to go in and sight unseen, come up and say, Oh, Paul's here and give him a big hug and all uh-huh. that around the corner. Uh, and astonish the other people from community action I was going to play with. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tell, I'm telling my sec- I'm telling my secret now. So, um, uh, it worked out. We, he said, well, I'm in the booth far down on the line. Uh-huh. I said, okay, we'll be there. So we went and he played it up great. Oh, he's a yeah. child, <laughs> a long lost friend. And I remember one of the people on our party went up to him and said, how do you know him? And the answer was bow tie school. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I know. So we had a lot of fun with that. Absolutely. Uh, had a lot of fun with that. Because now, you are the words out. The words out those now. Bow ties. That, yes. It was all. It was all kind of a setup. But, right. Uh, right. Right. But, but I like bow ties. It's kind of distinct. It's your thing. It's yeah. distinctive, and people now kind of expect it. And, if I don't have one on, they ask me where it is. Where, where is where it, is Charles? It? Some where people make requests. Yeah. How about that? That's right. <laughs> Charles, we're so happy that you are on the show today. Oh, I'm so, I appreciate I it so you, much. Charles. I love you, too, Sharon. We Cameron. appreciate it. everything uh, that you've I, done for I've enjoyed it since the moment I got here. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're so you. glad yeah. That, yeah. that you were able to make it, you know, down here. And, yeah. you know, that history that I was talking about of, you know, my daughter and helping leave some of that yeah. here for us and the yeah. ones that come behind us thank you so much right. <laughs> all right yes. that's the show you have been listening to let's talk more action tell your friends share the show we appreciate you 